Hi, welcome to another video brought to you by TurboCamaro.ca. Today we're going to be adjusting the hydraulic lifters on this Chevy 250 straight six engine. It's in a 67 Camaro. Keeping in mind, we're going to be doing this with the engine off and I'm going to be doing it uh, with it already have broken in. So it's been done before. Uh, the engine's been broken in and now we're going to be checking them and doing them again. I had an issue uh, shortly after break-in where one of the rocker arms turned sideways and I could hear a horrible clacking from inside and uh, of course it turned out to be that. So I'm not 100% sure if I've got uh, some bad rocker nuts or, or what the deal is. So I'm going to be checking those as well as uh, redoing all of the adjustments. So first things first, we're going to pull the valve cover pull the spark plugs and then if you can you can hook some bolts into the harmonic balancer that you can use it to turn your engine uh, you could also use some sort of flywheel tool or if you have a nut on the front of your crank right, you so can do that covers yeah. off so. uh, what I've also done is we pulled the spark plugs and as you can see there's bolts connected to the harmonic balancer I've loosened all of the rocker stud nuts these adjusting nuts right here all of them on all 12 I've loosened them uh, they're just sitting at the top, so they're not going to pop off, but they are all loosened to the point where now when I'm rotating the engine by hand, they're not going to really provide any um, major resistance. So it'll just make it easier for me to turn it over by hand since I'm doing it kind of in an awkward way. Uh, that being said, I've taken the two off of the first cylinder. So this is cylinder number one. And of course, it's then this engine, it's cylinder one through six, no problem. The firing order is a bit different, but we'll get to that. So I pulled the two... Um, nuts off and now what I want to do is I want to get them so that I'm sure they're going to hold now because I had that original issue with the rocker I'm turning I'm not convinced that these original nuts are going to work now of course I could go buy new ones uh, even though I can't because today's a holiday and the store is closed doesn't matter uh, but or I could go to a, a Posi lock or a sure lock or whatever you want to call them uh, but that being said I, I don't really have it in the budget I'd rather use the money for some other things so what am I going to do I'm going to make the old ones work by modifying them slightly so I read online that you can take an original stud or sorry original nut and make it uh, work for you again by basically hammering it. Now it sounds ridiculous but basically all these are just regular nuts and they've got um, the threads sort of we'll say damaged at the top. They're you know damaged at the factory so that they basically go on tight. Now over time you know they've been threaded up and down so much that the threads become undamaged and then they work just fine. So they come off really easily and then of course you're left with with rocker arms turning sideways on you. So what I'm going to do is put them on the ground here. I've just got them on the concrete. That's a big cement slab in the carport. I got a piece of cardboard more for the sake of them not going flying. That'll probably help cushion the impact on the bottom of them a little bit. And I'm just going to put a, a good hammer blow or two just on the top of the uh, of the nut so that it's um, just maybe goes back to the way it was from factory or at least close to it. Now, this may not last forever, uh, but it'll work for now and help me have some confidence that they're not going to come off. Because when I was loosening them all, some of them were really tough, probably you know similar to factory. And other ones, like I could almost have spun them off by hand, which is obviously not good. Now, I don't recall it being like that when the engine was put together, but... Um, it's, it's the way it is now, so we're going to fix it. So I'm just going to try doing this on camera here. It's probably going to be a bit shaky. So as you can see, pounded it right into the cardboard, which is fine. That'll be my new little template. And now I've got this hammer. Now I don't know if that's going to be good enough. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, but, you know, what can you do? We'll take a look here. I'll try the other one. I might put a little bit more oomph into it this time. Yeah, it was four. I cheated. So I may go back and do them all four. And you can see now, actually, by looking at it. Oh, see, watch out for that. <laughs> Got some cardboard in there. I'll have to pop that out. Uh, but you can see by looking at it, that is no longer a circle. It kind of has this sort of a triangular look to it. Which, if I can see with my eye, that definitely means it's no longer a circle. It's an odd shape. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. So keep in mind when you do this, you, you could get debris on the the, uh, the parts. Oh, shit. See, also keep in mind you can damage the ground too because these are solid steel. So that might actually be concrete in there. Let's hope I didn't do too much damage to it. Just for a moment, just to prove my story. I've told a lot of people that I live on an island in a forest. And there you go. Right there, it's a deer. 
you know, big surprise, whoop de woo but I'm like in my carport and it's right there. I could probably get about five feet from it and that uh, wouldn't go anywhere. Doesn't really care that I'm here at all. So back to the engine, <laughs> got a little setup here that should allow uh, you to see what's going on. Now, as I mentioned before, I've got two bolts down there on the harmonic balancer with these loose on all of them and the uh, belts taken off and spark plugs out. Uh, you can turn it by hand uh, with the two bolts. Now you have to kind of get in there and it's great. You could use a bar or something, which is probably ideal. So that's kind of what I'll do, but you could turn it by hand. I'm just going to use a large crescent wrench, which seems silly, but that's what I'm going to use. And I'll just turn it by hand. So we've got the exhaust on the right, intake valve on the left. Exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So what we're going to do is get it so that when this push rod here is coming up, just starts coming up, you like see it go then you know that it's good to go and you can then tighten down this one. So that's the first step. No, I'm not going to get ahead of you here. When this comes up, so when the exhaust valve is being the valve is being pushed down, that means it's opening. So when the exhaust valve is opening, even just the slightest bit, this intake valve is then ready to be adjusted. I don't know why it took me so long to understand this. I, the EOIC properties, blah, blah, blah. For whatever reason, I couldn't get it. So that's what you've got to do. When this opens just a little bit, you're good to go. You adjust this one down. When then we're going to basically revert and do the other way, but we'll get to that. So first things first, I'm going to turn this clockwise. Of course, I've got these in a funny spot. Clockwise, if I can. I may have to... Uh, Take a second here. All right, so we're turning. So you saw the intake maybe move just a little bit and I turn a bit more. And waiting for the exhaust to move. Nothing so far. Still nothing. Gonna adjust my wrench here. Should be any second now. All right, here we go. Killing me here. Of course, I'm working around the fan, and that makes things tricky. Okay, I'm expecting movement any second now. Nope, there it goes. So, it, it moved just a little bit. Probably not a big deal. I'm going to move it back. I'm going to go back just a bit. And we're gonna, just going to go forward. Until we got it so that it's just starting to move. Here we go, watch for it. There, so it's just starting to move, all right? Now it's ever so fine, but it's what's happening. So this now posture has come up, so the intake valve, just to the left here, is ready to be tightened down. Now, these are the two nuts that you saw me just destroy earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one down Till it's relatively snug. Now, like I said before, I pounded those and they are officially tight. <laughs> As you can see, I have to use a fair amount of effort to push these down. Now, these again may not be permanent like this. Ah, I've gone too far right out the gate here. So, the whole point is. I got overzealous talking about how tight they were. All right, so you can see how there's some some slack here. Now, what we're talking about is it's called lash. Now, in my mind, lash is essentially slack. So there is some slack here in this. You can see it moves up and down. 
So there's a bit of slack. You can you rotate a little bit, you can see. The idea is, is that with this one in this position, we want to adjust this one so that there is no slack, just to the point where there's no slack. So what you do is you grab the push rod that's adjusting, the intake in this case, with one hand, and you rotate it, and you just keep jiggling it until there is no slack, or in this case, lash. Oh, somewhere in there. So I'm gonna back it up just a bit. So I wanna get it just right. So there's the slack. And you can spin it a little bit as well. Oh, still a bit more. And we're tight. So there, we've got it to the point, there is no more slack. I can't really, I can't turn it by hand, just barely, you know, within an eighth of a turn. So now what you do is you wanna tighten it one more half turn. Now, there's a lot of people online that you get this confused, including myself. I, I'm referencing the comp cams installation instructions. It says one half turn, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna bring my wrench right to you, to the camera, so it's right by my finger here, and I go around exactly one half turn. That's it. Now the intake is adjusted to spec. So we're good to go. Now we're gonna do the exhaust. It's gonna be the same idea, but instead of the exhaust valve opening, we want it so that the intake is just starting to close. Right, so I had to cut the camera there. The big crescent wrench I was using was driving me nuts. So now I've got just a little tiny breaker bar, crowbar kind of thing. So now we're still waiting for the uh, intake to close. So in other words, the uh, push rod will start to go down. At the end of the rocker here should start to go uh, down. I think it just went up and we're just waiting for it to start going down there. I don't know if you can see that, but that just started to go down, and now we've got all the slack possible, or all the lash still there on the exhaust side. So now what we're going to do is the same thing we did to the intake side, is we're going to tighten it down, and hopefully not overly excitedly this time. We'll hold this one, we'll just jiggle it a little bit, Oop, move it up and down, yeah, it's still tons of play in there. Still going up and down, it's getting tighter, getting tighter, and nothing. So I'm just gonna back up just a bit. Yeah, see it still, still spins and still moves a little bit, and nothing. So that's that, and now what we do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna point the end of the wrench directly at you guys there. It's right here by my finger, and I'm gonna go one half turn to right there. And that is it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that for all of them. And in theory, uh, these, uh, the threads showing on the top of the studs should be the same. Now you can see there's about two threads and about two threads on both, which indicates, of course, that the amount of space on the actual cam is the same. So if you were to have them so that they were different all the way along, it might indicate that you've got uh, a really messed up cam lobes or something like that. This is brand new, there's no reason I would, but just something to keep in mind. If you've got one that's really, really high and then they're all really high and there's one that's really, really low or something like that, it could mean you've uh, you know, got a chip lobe or whatever. Uh, it's not my area of expertise, but that's what I understand. So I'm gonna go ahead now and do the rest of these and we'll come back and see how it turns out. The rocker arm adjustments, or the lifter adjustments. So I'm gonna show you this for interest sake. Uh, I put a big steel bar underneath the uh, cardboard here. I'm still gonna use the cardboard because I like the idea that it kind of holds it in place. Um, it won't look necessarily go flying away on me if, it, if something happens. Uh, but I think the steel bar underneath will prevent me damaging the concrete and will provide a, probably a flatter, more permanently flat surface for the nuts to stay on. So we'll finish doing all of these adjustments and um, we'll go from there. All right, so it's all done. You can see here that uh, each of the nuts, uh, adjusting nuts is all about the same height. I mean, within half a turn or half a thread or whatever. Uh, they shouldn't look one staggeringly higher than the other. So I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, something to think about, I had to take the fan off. Um, I didn't, I guess I didn't have to, but the way I was rotating the motor, the fan was getting in my way. 
And frankly, I was getting pissed off. Uh, so I just took the fan off. It's four bolts. It, it's a pain to put back on because of how narrow the gap is between it and the radiator. But that's fine. Once I got the those off, I was able to go back to my fancy crescent wrench and just use the uh, the ring on the end to hook around one of them. And then I had plenty of leverage and I could turn the thing no problem. So um, that's the way to go for me. Um, beyond that, um, something to consider also is the order at which you actually do the adjustments. For me, because I'm semi-inexperienced and just for the sake of my like OCD-like behavior, I decided to do them sequentially. So I literally did one, two, three, four, five, and six. I just went all the way across. That involves turning the engine over, like turning the ro rotating the motor. Uh, several more times than is if you were to do it in the order of which they fire. And in the straight six, it's one, five, uh, three, six, two, four. So it'd be one, five, three, six, two, and then four. Uh, and if you were to do it that way, you would be able to rotate the engine a whole lot less. But for me, I, I just didn't want to lose track. Uh, it's too important to me to, to not mess it up. Perhaps the next time I do it, I'll, uh, I'll try it that way and see how it goes. But in theory, doing it in firing order is better, regardless if it's a 6 or a V8 or whatever. So, yeah, what we're going to do is we're just going to put the valve cover back on. I'm going to clean up a little bit. There's a bit of oil drippage. Uh, clean that up, put spark plug back in, and uh, fan, and we'll see right, how so it goes. Put it all put back together. Two things I should have mentioned earlier. Uh, one, I was talking about the firing order for doing the, um, the adjustments in the, the correct firing order as it goes, rather than just doing it sequentially. Firing order would be a good idea because the if you're just building the engine especially because the uh, lifters the bottom of them and the cam lobes are going to have that special lubricant that you rubbed all over them if you do it by firing order you're just going to end up turning the engine over once uh, but if you do it sequentially it's lots of time so you're going to end up wiping off a lot of that lubricant so better off to do firing order get in the habit of it today i didn't but i've already had the engine running for a while so not uh, the end of the world for me uh, secondly when you're putting the spark plugs back in not a bad idea to check them out see you can do the you know look up online how to read a spark plug whether they're fouled with by oil or a carbon or whatever uh, you can clean them and put them back in uh, check the gaps as well so you don't have any uh, ignition issues and uh, that's it so if any other questions feel free to let me know on turbocamaro.ca or you can subscribe here on youtube for more videos as well as uh, lots of updates on facebook and twitter thank you for watching